Hi everyone, welcome back to Zoo Creates. My name is Jessica and I have Christina here with me. And today we're gonna to be making a really tasty um, snack, a really sweet snack um, called millipede rolls. And so this is something that we're going to need an oven for. We're going to be um, uh, cutting some pie crust and filling it with some filling and sticking it in the oven. And so you'll just wanna make sure that you have an oven handy for this snack. Now, the um, pie crust that we're using, we bought from the store but you can make your own pie crust or you can buy store-bought pie crust, whichever you'd like. Um, it was just a little easier for us today to buy pre-made pie crust, but it's really simple if you know how to make pie crust or you can look up really easy recipes. I can't remember ratios, but it's just uh, flour, vegetable shortening, and water um, is a really simple pie crust that you can look up. So what we're gonna do, if you did buy store-bought pie crust, we're going to show you how to cut it since pie crust comes in these nice big circles because you obviously would normally make a pie with them. I'll show you how to cut them. So we're gonna unroll our pie crust here. And then I'm gonna take a knife and I'm gonna cut it right down the center. I'm just gonna divide it into two. And so with these store-bought pie crusts, you can get about two millipede rolls per um, crust. And so store-bought pie crusts usually come um, in packs of two. And so per box, you'd be able to get four. And so, I'm going to pass Christina her half and then we'll show you how to cut from there. So now we just wanna make a rectangle. So what you can do is just cut off a, the rounded part at the top and then you can cut down the side. It doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle. Just wanna get those rounded pieces off. If they don't have any pie crust, would a large tortilla work for this or even a small one? Um, yeah, I think so. I think that that would be a good, good alternate. All right, and so those extra pieces, you can um, put cinnamon and sugar on them and throw them in the oven. That's what my mother likes to do. <laughs> um, or you can just discard them. And so now we have a nice rectangle. And so from here, what we're going to do, because millipedes are a um, invertebrate, which means that they don't have bones, and um, kind of similar to like insects or spiders or uh, centipedes. Um, and so we need to make a long, skinny millipede, because millipedes are really thin and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our knife or if you don't want to let kids use knives um, in our classes we usually give them tongue depressors or popsicle sticks to use as a knife um, but we're just using regular table knives and so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut slits down the edge of my pie crust I'll get a couple going and then I'll show you and um, we're wanting to make sure that we don't cut all the way to the center but here's a couple I'm just going to cut straight down um, my pie crust on this side and then I'm gonna make sure I leave a gap and then I'm going to cut down this side. So I'll get this going out here. Maybe I'll do, because some people are faster at cutting than I am. So, so this is what, once you get, I'm going to go straight down both sides. So you'll want to keep the center together and have the um, edges just cut. So you can cut all the way down. You don't want them to be too skinny, but you don't want your slits to be, your uh, pieces to be too um, wide either. So I'd say about a half inch is about as wide as you want them to get. But this is a really fun thing to let kids do all the way down. So you had mentioned centipede. Do you know what the difference between a centipede and a millipede is? Yes, so millipede means um, pede is foot and milla is um, for millions. So centip or mi millipede means millions of feet, whereas centipede, centa, is 100 and pede is foot. So the, when they were first um, naming bugs and invertebrates like that, they decided that centipedes must have 100 legs. And so they decided to call them centipedes. 100 feet and millipedes well they have a lot more legs than centipedes do they don't have a million legs but they have quite a bit they can have probably around two to three hundred legs and so they can name them millipedes some of them can even get up to 400 yeah legs. they can have a lot all right so once we have our pie crust cut all the way through um, we have our center here and so whatever you to fill your your roll you can use whatever you'd like um, if you want to use um, you can do apple slices with a little bit of cinnamon and sugar yeah, your favorite good. pie filling um, um, or chocolate pudding would taste really good. You could do that as well, um, or any kind of pudding for that matter. So you're just gonna find some sort of filling. Today we're using some cream cheese and some strawberry pie filling. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cream cheese first and we're gonna spread it down 
the middle there, the part that we didn't cut. And so you can, cream cheese is completely optional. You don't have to add cream cheese. I just really like the taste of cream cheese and strawberry pie. So that's why we decided to add that. So I'm just gonna spread it on down the middle. Okay, however much you'd like. And then you don't wanna stuff it too full because then it'll get hard to close it, but you do wanna make sure you get it all the way down. And then you can take your pie filling and you're just gonna dab that right on down the middle to fill it up. All right. So I know our pie filling is red. Do you know if there are actually any red millipedes out there? I do believe so. So millipedes can come in all sorts of different um, colors. Most of them are brown or black because they like to live down in the dirt, but there are some that are more brightly colored. So, all right, once you get your pie completely full, what we're going to do is we're gonna start on one end, and what I like to do is I like to take this first fold, and I'm gonna fold it straight over, because that's gonna kinda create a seal there on the end. So you're just gonna fold it over, and it's okay if you get some strawberries or pie filling that sticks out. And then we're just gonna take each side, and we're gonna braid them, we're gonna crisscross them across. And it's okay, like I said, if some of your pie filling starts to squeeze out a little bit. And you can make these rolls, you can make them pretty much however, or how, however big you'd like to make them. So, and we're just gonna go crisscross all the way down until we get to the last two. And just like the first one, um, we're going to squish it over. Ooh, I got a lot of filling on the end there. All right, and then instead of crisscrossing, we're gonna tuck it under. So just like that. And then you can stick your millipede in the oven. So we usually here at the zoo, we use parchment paper. So normally we would put um, parchment paper underneath of this and then stick it in the oven on a cookie sheet. Um, and it's gonna kind of depend on your oven, but it'll be um, probably at 350 um, would be the temperature. And you're gonna stick it in um, if you have a really fast cooking oven. It's not gonna take very long. It might take maybe 10 minutes. I um, would be surprised if it took longer than that. I think at my oven, it takes a little bit longer maybe 15 max but you really since the fillings cooked you're just wanting the filling to get heated up and you want your crust to become cooked and be golden brown so okay. about 10 15 minutes and so since we um, don't have that time with you we pre-made some magic of TV magic of TV that's right and so we have our millipede here and he's not quite done yet because how many legs did we say our millipedes have? Millipedes can have anywhere from 300 to 400, the biggest. They can species. have a lot of legs. And so we need to add some legs to our millipede. And so on our millipede, you see all these different lines. Do you know what, the, what those would be called on a millipede's body? I believe carapace. Yep, so that would be carapace. And these are all their segments. So millipedes yes. have lots of segments yeah, because do. if you know anything about an insect, insects have three bodies segments. Um, they have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, but millipedes are not insects. They have a lot more body segments, and so that's what these different lines are. And so for to make legs coming off those body segments, we have some chocolate frosting, and so we made a piping bag out of just a little Ziploc bag, and I cut a teeny tiny little hole in the corner with some scissors. Um, you can also just use a toothpick if you want to do that. You can dip it, um, or um, if you have reusable piping bags at home, you can do that too. And so we're just gonna draw on our legs with frosting right on the side. And so with millipedes, I said that they have two to 400 legs, and so they have more legs than our centipedes do. Also with millipedes, centipedes only have one set of legs per body segment, whereas millipedes have two sets of legs per body segment. So when I draw my legs on, I like to really draw on two sets of legs on each of those body segments. So that that way I know it's a millipede instead of a centipede. So you can just go all the way down his body. All right, so there's one side. While we're doing this, do you wanna know a, another difference between a millipede and a centipede? I would love to know another one. 
So synth or millipedes are actually a uh, herbivore. Specifically, they're a decomposer, which means that they like to eat the stuff that's at the bottom of the ground, kind of already a little squishy most animals don't really look at, um, versus then you have centipedes. They are actually carnivores, so they can eat other bugs. They can eat some uh, rotten meat that's on the ground, things that are left behind. So these guys are going to be plant eaters versus our centipedes can be meat eaters okay. as well. Okay. All right, so I've got all my legs drawn on, and then I decided I'm gonna have this end be my head. So um, uh, millipedes, since you said they're decomposers, um, do they have eyes? They, if they do, they're really small. I don't think they really have eyes. They use their antennas to really find their way around. Yeah, so they have these two little things on top of their heads that are called antennas. They're kind of like feelers that they use. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw a couple of antenna on the top of our millipede so that way he can feel his way around. All right, and there you have a really tasty snack. Now when you decorate your um, millipede roll, you'll wanna make sure that you let it cool down before they decorate it, um, so that way your frosting doesn't just melt right off of your millipede roll, and then make sure it's nice and cool before kids start to eat it too. Yes. So this would be a really nice tasty dessert to have after dinner sometime, really easy to make as well. So Christina, who did you bring with for us today? I I brought one of our millipedes actually. Oh, we have a lot of different bugs in our education department because uh, bugs, spiders, all these different things have a lot of important roles in the wild and we love to share those with y'all. So while I'm cleaning up real quick, I will get our friend out. I have to get my mask on first though because we want to make sure that our friend stays nice and safe right now. And then I gotta get gloves. So the millipede that you're gonna get out, is he one that we would find here in Iowa? That is a great question, and the answer would be no. This guy is specifically a giant African millipede. So he would be found over in Africa, uh, Madagascar, over in that region. He's not one that you would find in Iowa. If you did, he's really, really lost. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our little friend, the giant African millipede. I'm gonna go ahead and let him wander around on the table. Uh, he does enjoy walking around on us. It's always fun during programs. People get weirded out when he's walking on our arms, but it feels really cool, and he has an awesome grip. All those little legs have little claws on the end to make sure that he can hold on to us so he can walk all the way up on my arm on my shirt and it doesn't bother him in the least. Honestly, it tickles a little bit and it feels kind of cool. If you guys have a little plastic comb at home that you want to uh, take and very gently rub it down your arm, that's actually what his legs kind of feel like walking all over. Yeah, or like the prickly side of Velcro. That's yes. what I kind of compare that's what you it use to Velcro. as well. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah. Velcro would be fun too. And so up here, if you look really close, those are his antennas that we were mentioning. Those are what he's kind of using to feel around. Uh, since he can't see, he uses those to make sure that there's an edge for him to walk on. He doesn't want to just walk right off the edge of the table. He's very good at making sure he doesn't fall. Uh, but if he does fall, he does have this exoskeleton on his back, which is really, really tough. Honestly, if you guys have ever uh, felt his back before, it feels like plastic. That's the best description that I can give for it, and so that allows him to keep himself safe if he does ever take a tumble off of something, uh, which he is very curious at the moment, and I don't want him to do. <laughs> so you said exoskeleton. Can you yes. kind of say what that means? What does exoskeleton mean? So exoskeleton is something that almost all insects, bugs, whatever invertebrate they are, that's what they have to protect themselves. So our skeleton is on the inside. We are kind of soft on the outside, and our hard skeleton, which allows us to be the way we are, is on the inside, versus these guys are soft and squishy on the inside and they have that tough exoskeleton, tough skeleton on the outside to protect them. So no bones inside? No, they do not have any bones. They just have this hard outer coating rather than a, rather than a bone. All right. So what's one of the ways that he can protect himself? Because he's not, he, I mean, he's big, but he's not, you know, really big. I imagine he has predators. He does have predators. Uh, to any animal that eats insects, he is like finding a Twinkie on the floor. Uh, you're going to look at, they're going to look at him and they're going to think, ooh, this looks like a tasty little treat. Uh, so he has his exoskeleton is one way to protect him. Another way you kind of see whenever I pick him up to move him, he starts to kind of spiral up. That can protect him a little bit because some animals can't pick him up with how smooth he is when he spirals. Uh, but one of his number one ways to 
to defend himself is actually he has a toxin. Um, and so that means that he uh, has something that it smells really bad, it tastes really bad, it's a yellow liquid that would actually be released from glands above his legs. So when he gets really stressed out, he will release that liquid and it'll kind of run down his legs and if an animal's trying to eat him, they'll swallow it and it can make them sick, it can uh, just make this really bad odor if they don't eat him because typically that odor will keep the animals away before that starts happening. Um, but that's going to be his primary self of defense is that toxin. So you said he was a decomposer. Yes. Can you kind of talk a little more about what a decomposer means? That's a really big that word. Is so a what big does word. that mean? So a decomposer is a fancy herbivore or a fancy category in, for herbivores, which means, like I said, he eats kind of the stuff that maybe we wouldn't think of, tr apples that fall from trees that are starting to get bruised. He's going to eat those. Um, and then he kind of poops soil as a result. Not really, but what when he, is at, when he eats all that stuff that's kind of breaking down, kind of not great looking on the ground, it's very important for the forest because he is going to first off clean the forest floor and you want a very clean forest floor because if there's dead leaves and everything on the floor then there's no new plants that can grow because plants need sunlight so he's going to help kind of clean up that forest by being a decomposer be kind of like the forest janitor um, and then if that afterwards of that like I said he his poop is actually very high in nutrients so not only does it keep the forest floor clean being a decomposer but his poop also will help keep that soil nice and rich so those new plants that are trying to grow have all the nutrients that they need kind of like you guys are supposed to drink your milk when you're growing up to get strong his poop kind of helps those plants like milk would so he's kind of like a garbage man of the forest or yes. um, like like earthworms he's very yes. similar to earthworms or even like um, uh, all, uh, vultures vultures are decomposers as well they eat all the dead animal carcasses that are out there so Correct. they could also be cleaning up out there too yes decomposers are the helpful creatures of the of the wild that help clean and uh, make sure wild stays nice and healthy awesome do you want to know a weird fact that lemurs do with these guys? Oh, would love to. <laughs> I like my weird facts. I'm sorry. Uh, but weird fact with these guys. So these guys can also be found on Madagascar where lemurs are. And if you don't know what lemurs are, they're little tiny monkeys with big fluffy tails that are very curious guys. Um, and so scientists have actually found out in the wild by watching these or watching lemurs uh, and their studies. And they have seen lemurs pick these guys up, bang them on trees, annoying the living daylights out of them until they release that toxin. They're not going to eat the millipedes, but what they are wanting is that toxin. And once it is released, they rub it all over their body. Do you have any idea why they would do that? Hmm. If it doesn't smell good, it would maybe repel something? Yes, it repels bugs. So they are actually making their very own bug spray in the wild. Personally, I would rather stick with the bug spray we have. <laughs> As a fun fact, if that toxin gets on us, it has a chemical reaction with our skin and that yellow liquid will turn us purple, make it look like we have a big old bruise on our body. <laughs> so I'm very happy that our millipedes like us and don't do that. I like yes. to not be purple. So oh, nice. yes, that's what lemurs love to do with them and that's why we make sure that our guys are not stressed out and they enjoy their life because I don't want to be purple. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, so do the millipedes that um, that we find around here, are they gonna get as big as this millipede will? They will not. So the millipedes that we have here, I mentioned he is a giant African, and so we're giant, obviously. He's going to be larger than most of the other species are. Um, and so he's actually one of the, if not the largest species of millipede that are out there. The common house millipedes that we have, they might get a couple inches long, but they're also gonna be a lot skinnier. They're not going to get nearly as large as this guy is when it comes to width as well as length. Uh, they're going to be probably that long at max and then nice and skinny little guys. They're okay. not going to get very how, big. How big can these millipedes get? Uh, giant African millipedes can get, I believe the largest they've recorded is about 15 inches long. So ours, wow. ours aren't that big. Uh, they typically get to be about 10, 12 inches at most, but they can, they have been recorded at 15 before. Wow, that is really big. So, so that, that'd be like, yeah, I was going to say, that'd be like the li width length of an adult's arm. Yes, yeah. so that's a pretty big bug. I like big bugs. I'm perfectly okay with them staying this size though. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Christina, for bringing You're a welcome. millipede in to show everybody. And I hope you enjoy your millipede roll snacks. Um, and we hope to see you again back at Zoo Creates. Goodbye. Bye.